All right, so I'm Scott from South Florida Insider, and I'm here with... Steve Harwell from Smash Mouth. So, first off, what's it feel like being back over here in South Florida at this uh, big festival? You got REO Speedwagon down in the distance going on. You guys kind of uh, competing with each other, so to speak. I know. I just That's a little bummer, because I actually wanted to see them. We've done some shows with them in the past, and... Uh, I actually know a lot of their crew guys and some of the guys in the band. They're just good guys, and I grew up with that music, you know. So um, they're just as good today as they were when they started. They're actually better, I think, you know, a little bit sober. So <laughs> they can actually remember what they're playing. So can I. So, But, uh, no, it's it's exciting. I love playing down here, especially now. The weather's been so damn good. You know, I can't believe how nice it is out right now. But we'll now. see how long you last. Dude, come on, I'm in better shape than I've been in 15 years, man. And, and being that, that you guys have had a, a long history now, yeah. what, what's going on with this uh, album? Everybody's been kind of in the dark waiting to know when uh, we're going to see the release. Uh, well, we've been working on it. I just finished vocals, so that's the big step forward right there. So Greg and Paul and the guys are doing all the harmonies, backgrounds right now. So we're close, and we're in the process of writing the last two songs. We have the whole record done. We've got 15, 16 songs already, so done, basically in the can, I would say. But we want to, a record's never done until it's done. So we plan on having it finished within the next month. So it's not that much work. And I heard that it's speculated that it's kind of a return to, like, the old roots and stuff. Well, kind of, but this is a kind of a, this is, we have two records coming out, basically. We have this record, and then we're actually starting on a brand new, another Smash Mouth record, which that's going to be a throwback to the old style. This is if this is a really unique record. This is basically, we picked a lot of songs that we've really liked over the years, and we've just tried to redo them the best we can, along with adding some of our new stuff in there. So it's kind of, and we're releasing a few songs that we never released. Like we did a remake of... Uh, of a Depeche Mode track that is just amazing. We did a Don't You Forget About Me from Simple Minds, which came out awesome. We did Centerfold from Jay Giles Band, which came out awesome. So we have all these songs, and we're just going, what are we going to do with all these songs? So I said, let's just put them on a record, and then we'll write a couple new ones. So it's all new stuff, basically. But there's some songs, a couple songs from other artists that you don't even that you wouldn't even know, that I didn't even know about, because our record label owns so many catalogs of music. They're like, we want to do something with these catalogs, so let's listen to, we listened to thousands of songs. I mean, literally, it was like, I was exhausted, man. So we narrowed it down, and I was like, okay, here's my top 20 favorite ones, and then we narrowed it down from there. So we ended up 15 tracks, let's, let's just record 15. Plus we've got, I would say, five or six Smash Mouth songs that are already done ready to go that we're going to pick in between. So we want to narrow it down to probably 11 tracks. So any singles released before then? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, we'll have a single out here pretty quick. So that's what we're in the process right now. I mean, you just don't want to throw throw something out there for the sake, you know, just for the sake of throwing it out there. I was just talking to Stan from Sugar Ray the other day and, and he said that's what we did. That was our biggest mistake. The label stepped in and said, okay, hurry up, the record's done. They're like, the no, record's not, not done. Yeah. And so they ended up putting stuff out that doesn't do anything, and that's just useless, wasted time. You just ruined a completely great record. And they could salvage it if they went back and re-recorded another hit or two, and then, you know, kind of resequence the record, repackage it. People do it all the time, but I just talked to Stan. I said, you guys need to get focused and get back in the studio. Because he said that uh, Mark wasn't that focused because he's having twins on the way, and, and like, like any day now, and I've never thought Mark would be a dad. So I was wow. like, dude, you know what? Double trouble for all the shit you caught back in the day, you know? So him and I have been through some shit, let me tell you. Hey. Um, go ahead. Oh, wait, and with the history and stuff, I mean, I know you had your own take on Strux's album, yeah. too, and I'm a believer and stuff. I, I mean, is it really one of those things, like, you like doing your own spin of, Whatever song you we do, it's love not it. one of those straightforward covers. It's your own take. It's on our it. own take, and that's the good thing about our band. That's the great thing about our band. I, I won't even say good. It's a great thing, and I, I'll toot my own horn on this one. I think we're really good at redoing good songs that have been hits, songs that have been something in the past. If there's something about our band. We're just able to take with our producer Eric over the years. We're just able to really take songs, and and I'll give a lot of credit to. Paul and Greg and you know the rest of the guys because it takes a it's a whole band effort to kind of readjust these songs re rearrange them add that smash mouth feel and make a song like I'm a believer which the kid I mean the younger generations they don't even know where that song came from you know and you know and so you get songs like that and can't get enough of you and why can't we be friends and you know we've just put our twist on them and fortunately 
it's come out to where it's paid off in the past. And so that's what we wanted to do on this record. We're like, let's just take a bunch of great songs and make them better. And let's just, let's just, let's put the guy that wrote the song, let's put a check in his fucking mailbox for him. You know, I mean, basically that's what we're doing. So, and I mean, we've, we've re-kicked the monkey's career, uh, we re-kicked, um, I can't remember the other name, but the guys that the guys that wrote Can't Get Enough You, uh, Question Mark and the Mysterians, they never even, they were done. They're back on tour. They went back on tour after that record. So everybody come back and thank you? Basically. <laughs> oh, yeah, many times. I've had uh, I've had the guys from uh, from the Monkees. I mean, they were like, you know, you know, we want to fly you out. Would you come out and sing the song? Just for one song. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I mean... And then, you know, and then Neil Diamond started redoing it, because Neil Diamond wrote that song, you know, I'm a believer, for the Monkees, and everybody thought the Monkees wrote it, so uh, Neil Diamond started doing our version of it in his shows, and so... And, uh, I, and I heard, isn't Weezer now doing it on the latest Shrek album? Probably, it, it'll fail. <laughs> There's only one band that can do it, and every time they, And the only reason we're not doing it now is because we left our label, and it, it's a political thing. The okay. label, you know, if we're not involved directly, they're not going to give. Why would they even give that up to us? So they have control with the movie company, and the movie company's probably going, "Gee, many Christmas, we really want Smash Mouth to do this." But that's what happened with the. I mean, even with the Counting Crows, I was talking to Adam, and uh, and he's like, "Dude, this is going to totally fall on its ass." He goes, "I don't know why they didn't ask you guys to do." I mean, they're still putting our music in it. Yeah. But it's like, dude, let us write the single. I mean, Greg and I flew down on Shrek Two saw like I don't know a half hour of private secret footage really cool and basically close up real quick and basically um, we um, we basically had to take notes and they were like okay here's what we want to do here and we've never done something like that before so Paul, Paul and I and Greg got together a couple nights later when we got back in town and we wrote this song called Beside Myself and it was tailor made for the beginning of that movie and it's it was all political. It, do you ever look back at like uh, some of the movies that have been released and just kind of thought, "Wow, our music would fit perfectly for that." Is there anything that's ever been uh, that way? All, that's probably almost every day. I mean, I look at it like that. I go, "Is it only but, on the cartoon side or is no?" It everything? Oh no, everything. I mean, because because we license so much music. Um, you know, I, I mean, we are fortunate. I mean, thank God we are. I mean, we do license pretty much more music than most artists out there. And I, you know, I thank God for that every day because you know that just that keeps you out there all the time. Even if you're not putting the record out, you're there. You know, it's all subliminal, basically. It's like I think I just heard that somewhere. You know, there's a Pizza Hut commercial or some shit like that. You know, but I mean, we're fortunate like that, and our music has just been a favorite for TV and movies. I think it's just been, you know, our music's really, it's really like family friendly I guess I mean we don't I don't need to go out there and say fuck prick shit on a record to make it good I mean if you gotta do that then you know how to write songs I mean you know we're able to make songs for everybody to have fun with I mean you can bring grandma to the son to the father to the son I mean to the nephew to the I mean everybody can come to our show and, ha- and have a good time you what know? about the beyond- grandma's not enjoying this out there right now <laughs> Let me- no problem all right, and just kind of like on the TV side, I mean, you've had your mu- music and uh, shows, you've had it in movies, but you've also done uh, the surreal life and stuff. What's your take on uh, being in front of the camera instead of having your audio kind of uh, parlaying in the background? I mean, it was, it was, that was kind of something I should have never done, and I regretted doing it at the time. And I had turned down four times, and I was like, finally, I mean, off the record, well, it's on the record, screw them. <laughs> they gave me like three times as much money as anybody else and I said hey, I'll go do it and they wanted me to drink and I wouldn't drink so they hated me halfway through it because they were like wanted this crazy side of Steve Harwell that they used to see uh, you know they're used to seeing and then I quit drinking you know I haven't drank in four years I mean so so we're not going to see another surreal life <laughs> no you're not going to see that so and I also did the show because they had promised me a pilot for my own show which uh, they defunct on or whatever you call it but uh, we had some issues during that but you know whatever it all happens for a reason I guess